Okay, on Top Secret, we're going to show three videos, and then you're going to talk about one of the designs that we posted up. And uh, you can ask questions, but we might not answer it because these are Top Secrets. See you on the other side. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay, this is the new round display breakout mm. that we're getting into the shop, and I'm making a tester for it. And the way the tester works is we have a Metro M0 with our iSpy generic tester. And it connects uh, via the iSpy connector on the back, which has all the pins. So it's a great way to just verify all functionality and also the connector. Uh, it reads a bitmap off of the SD card and it displays it onto the back, on the, sorry, the, onto the TFT, and then it pulses the backlight. So now you've tested every element of the uh, display functionality and this is ready to go into the shop. So you can have okay. some round display action coming soon, next week. See you around. See you, Blinka. All right, Lady Data, what is this? Okay, I'm testing out this ESP32 and ESP266 programmer dongle. Wait, check stuff up, right? Um, that I designed. It's got a USB serial converter chip and the dual NPN transistors and pull ups needed to kind of do the um, boot zero and reset toggle that is used to program ESP chips without needing an external like GPIO controller or, or pressing any buttons. Uh, so I've got an uh, on LED here, and then I have it wired up to, like, I kind of found a random ESP8266 module. And then I use ESP tool here, and uh, let's do, like, chip ID, and we'll say, okay, found an ESP8266, and it can upload the stub and stuff. Um, and then if I do something like reading the flash, uh, this is a good way to test the LEDs. You can see data being transmitted. And I like having LEDs to help debug to see like is the chip not responding, in which case um, RX wouldn't be blinking. Uh, you can see it's um, reading all the data off of this chip and it's working great. And then I also did a test where I erased the chip and then reprogrammed it with the dump firmware and that worked out great too. And this chip can do like, you know, easily one megabit per second baud rate. So this will be handy for me and maybe for others. I'm gonna get this into the shop real soon. I just have to fix, this was not quite centered. Had some math mistakes. So I'm going to just like bump that over and um, fix the resistor on the cell to make it a little brighter. Hey, Lady Ada, is this new? This is new. <laughs> How could you tell? Okay. Uh, I'm testing out some samples of filament letters. These are uh, chip on boards with like dozens of white LEDs with a yellow filament to give them a nice warm glow. I think they're meant to go into like, you know, decorative light bulbs and stuff, but you can spell out stuff. Each one basically is an LED that draws 40 milliamps with about, you know, three volt forward voltage. So in this case, I'm driving off of my um, uh, power supply. I just have them in series. Of course, you could do it series or parallel. If it's series, just add up about, you know, 2.8 volts per. And if it's in parallel, just add, you know, 40 or 50 milliamps per. Um, either way, you can make a really cool little displays. And, and they are visible from the back, although they're not as bright. They're like fairly bright, but um, not like super, super duper bright. Um, but they look cool. They're super fun and they're not too expensive. So I thought I would stock them. It's going to be like 26 SKUs because I have to have one for each letter and then I'm also going to have 10 for the numbers. Um, so it'll be 36 items. But then you can spell anything you like. This can make for like cool wearable jewelry. I could think this would be fun to spell on a hat, yeah. on toys, on like a you know, display for your room. That's right. All sorts of fun stuff. So um, this is new yeah. and this is going to be in the store soon. Yeah. Men. Men? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Alrighty, and uh, what's this? Um, I'm trying to do a couple more projects with I2S out, and I need like more I2S stuff in the shop because uh, we don't have a lot of I2S outputs. So this is a PCM5102 or 5112 uh, I2S output. What I like about this one is it's uh, pretty high quality. You can actually buy it. It's not too expensive, and it doesn't need M clock, so you can use it with a Raspberry Pi. Okay, cool. Well, uh, that's this week's Top Secret. Okay, before we go into the questions, yeah, a um, couple folks point out, great for wearables, a lot of fun with this. And then also, um, you know, this is preview of the round display. So the Top Secret usually, it's pretty close to things that we're uh, about to put in the store, but sometimes not.